A warm welcome to this first webinar under the new initiative Health Systems for Early Childhood Development, which is a close partnership among UNICEF Regional Office for Europe and Central Asia, the WHO Regional Office for Europe and ESA, the Early Childhood Network for Europe and Central Asia. As ESA, we are delighted to be part of the initiative that aspires to bring a shift uh, to change the perspective on the role and capacity of the health system to support early child development. This is something that ISA has heavily invested in over the past years by going deeply into ways of bringing early childhood development into health systems in Europe and Central Asia, but also more broadly by working towards strengthening the system strengthening the capacity of practitioners in the system so that services for young children and their families are of the highest quality. In this partnership, um, ISA will be leading content creation but also dissemination aspects, which includes uh, webinars, blogs and the development of a brand new website for the initiative. We hope you will all join uh, and, and benefit from all that is shared. We will leverage all our network mechanisms to get knowledge into the hands of users and at the same time to facilitate a vibrant platform for sharing among all those who are interested in this area. We are excited to share more and more with you in the coming months. Please stay tuned. And we very much hope that you will engage with us, uh, starting by subscribing to the initiative's newsletter list. Today, in this brief welcoming panel, before we go into the content, I am joined by representatives of all the partners in this initiative. First, we will hear from Gabriel Fontana, who is Regional Health Advisor at the UNICEF uh, Regional Office for Europe and Central Asia. Then we will hear from Martin Weber, Team Lead Quality of Care and Program Manager of Child and Adolescent Health at the WHO Europe Office on Quality of Care and Patient Safety. And finally, we will hear from Ivelina Borisova, who is Regional ECD Advisor at the UNICEF Office for Europe and Central Asia. In this welcoming panel, we are all excited to share um, our warm welcome to you, but also I invite our colleagues to share their perspective on the initiative and its added value. I will now pass the microphone to you, Gabriel. Thank you so much. Hvala puno, Liana. Good morning, colleagues. Drago mi je da smo ovdje, to je jedna privilegija i da imamo priliku da učiskujemo u ovim sesijama i da damo neke uvodne ideje. Kao što svi znate, UNICEF je o dobrobiti dece i o deci i veoma često mi pričamo puno o poživljavanju dece na globalnom nivou, ali sve više se uključujemo i u dobrobit dece, da obezbedimo da deca iskoriste svoj potpuni potencijal. I smatramo da je to promjena koju vidimo u mnogim zemljama i u zdravstvu, gde zdravstvo se više ne definiše kao preživljavanje, već kao kvalitetne usluke i date na vreme koje daju kompetentni pružoci koji pomažu deci da dostignu svoj potpuni potencijal. I ovo je sada još značajnije sa decom koja imaju izgove, možda imaju probleme sa rastom, sa razvojna kašljenja, manje ili veće nesposobnosti. Vidimo da ovaj naš sistem se izgleda rasteže i imamo izazove da pružimo podršku toj deci i njihovim porodicama i takve institucije kao što su škole i 
im pružujem svakodnevnu podršku. Tako da mislim da ova inicijativa i sve kolege i institucije koje podržavaju ovaj zajednički napor stvarno čine razliku u promeni u promeni načina na koji radimo, gde smo fokusirani na razvoj dece u ranom detinstvu, da je to veoma značajno, da se napravi ova promjena i da ja sam lekar, da mi moramo da idemo šire od fizičkog zdravlja i da posmatramo psihološko, mentalno, društveno dobrostanje da se iskoristimo naše kapacitete, da identifikujemo sve elemente koji su možda rani znaci, da se ili dete ima neki problem ili pati od nečega, bilo da su to lični ili u okruženju koje mogu da kompromituju potpuni razvoj deteta i kada svi znamo, kada radimo brzo, kada sam da kažem, da izvinite moje kliničko poreklo, Da, kad radimo na svetečki način, mi možemo da napravimo veliku razliku u životu deteta. Tako da se stvarno radujem da vidimo toku razgovora danas, ali čak i više u zajedničkom naporu koji zajednički oblikujemo. Da li da ćemo uspeti da napravimo promenu u ovom smislu? Hvala vam puno. Pre svega želim da se zahvalim ISI i UNICEF-u zato što su organizovali ovaj webinar i ja sam impresioniran da vidim više od 200 ljudi, što pokazuje ogroman interesovanje koje ovaj problem izaziva. Daću vam tri stvari u okruženju kućnih poseta u ovoj publici. Ne moramo da kažemo koliko je značajno, značajno je rani razvoj za razvoj deteta i kod nas je to jako prominentna komponenta. Sve članice zemlje su rekli da su zainteresovane, ali kada smo pogledali detaljno, shvatili smo da su suština i kvalitet su često nedostajali, tako da smo mi krenuli pre pet godina napred da razvijemo evropski okvir za rani razvoj detinstvu, koji mnogi od vas u publici, vi ste doprinuli za to i on je usvojen pre četiri godine, tako da imamo čvrstu bazu sa standardima i indikatorima za razvoj ranom detinstvu, što je osnova za alat procene. And we will have future sessions where we go in more detail into this. I'm very grateful for my colleagues uh, from UNICEF for really actively moving this forward, this assessment tool forward in countries. In this context, we realized again, home visiting is a very important and promising component, but we know the quality with which it was provided was very variable and particularly in Eastern European countries that many of the patronage nurses didn't really have the skills and competencies which they needed. So this is the area which we want to work on, which we want to move forward and really harness the full potential of home visiting because it gives us an opportunity to see the child also in his living environment. And as you all know, it's an active follow-up rather than a passive uh, one there. Important, and again, this is the way to take it forward afterwards, is to embed it in proper referral pathways. We cannot leave the home visitor alone. If something doubtful or abnormal is found, it needs to be referred to somebody who knows much more about uh, this condition or can do a differential diagnosis. And to address this, we have just published half a year ago a pocketbook of primary care for children and adolescents, which tries to provide evidence-based guidelines for home visitors, for other community-based providers, school nurses, general practitioners, family doctors, and community pediatricians to really establish referral pathways prominently. So again, this is certainly the topic for one of our upcoming sessions later, just to set the stage for that. And I was introduced as being the team lead for quality of care. I've moved to Athens about half a year ago, and I think this gives new opportunities for us here because the quality of home visiting is a key issue. If it's not provided with good quality, 
uh, it's not going to be acceptable to the community. And we will have a review of the issues in quality of care, including one for home visiting over the next years. And I built on you to help us with this review, with providing country experiences and country examples for it. With this, I stop here because I'm keen to get to the core substance of the webinar. Thanks very much again for having me here. Thank you very much, Martin. And this, this last point you stressed of quality, indeed, uh, without quality, simply uh, offering access to services is meaningless. And we cannot have quality without empowered practitioners. So it's all interconnected. And finally, uh, in this welcoming panel, it is my pleasure to give the floor to Ivelina Borisova, who is a regional ECD advisor at <coughs> UNICEF's Office for Europe and Central Asia, Asia and a long standing partner uh, for us at ESA. A pleasure to be working together again. Thanks a lot, Liana, and um, good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us on a Friday. It really is impressive to see so many of us together um, under this broad umbrella. I have the privilege to introduce just a little bit the, the aims and the objectives of the initiatives um, under which umbrella we're here together in this webinar talking about home visiting more specifically. Um, but it would be helpful to just give you broad strokes, the kind of the the aim and the vision and the ambition behind this initiative where um, three key partners have come together and you've heard from all of us already, um, UNICEF, Regional Office of Europe and Central Asia, WHO Europe and ESA, um, with whom we are very pleased to, to be working together on this. Um, so what is the initiative's objective? I think you see it very clearly and I think in today's conversation it will become even more clear why that is important, but it really is to support this paradigm shift in health systems towards really development I mean, making healthcare policy practices and general health systems more supportive of child's holistic development. We want to talk about why this is important, but why this is the right time to really move this forward um, in a more systematic way across the region. From our perspective, and I, and I think this is a shared perspective across all of the partners involved in this initiative, healthcare services and health practitioners have multiple key contacts with almost every single parent, newborn and young child during the critical years of life. And we believe these contacts are unique, important, and to be to be leveraged in the best possible way for the child's optimal development and the well-being and thriving of the child and, and his or her family. And we're very, very grateful that we're together with um, uh, so many experts who have joined to support this initiative through the technical advisory group. And um, we'd like to thank them especially for, for working with us very closely in the last year or so to get to this place, um, but also looking forward to their support going forward. You can go into the next slide. This was this was uh, well appropriate. Um, when we talk about this initiative and what we hope to achieve, um, you can see very clearly um, some of the key elements of kind of the health system components where we hope early childhood development um, aspects will be strengthened and, and brought forward. Um, of course, we're looking at how child development is integrated and embedded into facility-based services. Today, we're talking about home visiting, which is crucial. Uh, we're also looking at how to support developmental monitoring through health systems and very importantly how to support children with more complex and additional needs and to coordinate care in early childhood intervention um, services through the health care provision as well. It's an ambitious goal but very important um, and I think maybe just a, mi a minute or two you can go on to the next slide, thank you, um, on uh, who our audience we hope to be. And I think uh, there's there's many, many different stakeholders that we hope to reach. You can go to the next slide. Um, first, we're looking to work with policy and decision makers. And I think I see some of you already here today. We're looking at program developers and making this knowledge hub and the work of this initiative relevant to you. Of course, regional and national partners professional associations and networks at the national and regional level, uh, but also very importantly, health practitioners and early childhood development staff working on these services. We will do our very best, I think, with your feedback and support to curate and to bring forward best practice, cutting edge um, experiences, training and resources to all of you to make sure that we together move towards this paradigm shift in the health systems, which is already well underway. Uh, but we hope that this initiative and this knowledge hub um, will also create a learning community among all of us, because this is still work in progress, as we will hear today. 
um, despite much progress already taking place, I think we're all learning how, how to do it better, how to do it more systematically, and how to bring quality um, in these services into the, into the health system as well. Um, so we're very much looking forward to dedicated webinars, learning exchanges, um, blogs, and of course, e-learning resources that uh, many of you are already contributing towards as well. Um, with that, I hand over back to Liana and we'll come back at the end to let you know some the exciting news of when we actually plan to fully launch um, the hub and uh, all the resources that are already associated with it. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Eva, and for this very, very clear overview and how excited we all are. The initiative really is for all those who are interested, the participants who joined us today, and it will be up to all of us how to make it vibrant and meaningful and also learning for, from each other. We will do our best to provide the platform as Eva just described. With this, um, we are really excited now to move into the content part of our webinar and I pass the floor back to Zorica for this. Thank you, thank you, Liana. Thank you for, and thank you for the welcoming for the welcoming panel. It was so exciting listening to all of you and I'm part of this initiative from the beginning and I'm extremely proud. I'm extremely proud to be part of the initiative. So let me walk you fast through a very packed agenda that we have for today. So we went through welcoming panel, uh, then we are going to move to keynote presentation given by, by our distinguished speaker. And uh, we expect that during this keynote, we will be challenged and provoked to think a little bit out of the box. Uh, and after that, we will hear testimonies from the region on health visiting services and their relevance from beneficiaries and providers and also about the work which was done until now in the region. And we hope that policy and practice panel are going to inspire your current and future work. So let me introduce our keynote speakers and panelists. Can I have an extra? Yeah. So, we keynote speaker is Alison Morton, fellow and executive director of the Institute of Health Visiting from UK. Then in the policy panel, we are going to meet and talk with uh, Dr. Gunel Mamadova from Tabib from Azerbaijan. Then with Dr. Salikohad, sorry, sorry, Salikohadeva from the Ministry of Health of Republic of Pakistan. Alexandra will walk us through what we did and what we are planning to do in the region. And at the end, we are going to meet a frontline worker, a doctor nurse, a home visitor from Serbia. She's going to tell us about some innovative practices that we are, that, that are introduced, introduced in the region. So let's move to Alison. Uh, as I said, Alison is a fellow and executive director in, at the Institute of Health Visiting in UK. And we all have in the region very positive experiences with the, with the Institute. And we are very grateful for their support during the years. She has extensive background in health visiting practice, home uh, research and leadership. It's very problematic with uh, terminology. Some people use health visiting practice, some call it home visiting. Um, so I'm going to switch between, between the terms and I hope it's okay. So she has also extensive background in research leadership and policy, <coughs> sorry, she's driven to ensure that every child has the best start in life. And we hope that uh, she will illustrate through her presentation, how can we harness the power of home visiting to give every child the best start in life, that we are going to 
to see how she sees how home visiting can make her dreams come true. So welcome, Alison. Thank you for being with us. And the microphone is yours. Thank you very much, Sarita. Can you hear me? Yes. It's, um, so thank yes, you. It's yes, a huge privilege. You. Thank you. Thank you. It's a huge privilege to join you today. And um, it's wonderful to know, isn't it, that there are, is a global community of like-minded people who all have either seen firsthand the, the power of home visiting or are interested enough that you want to find out more. Uh, and thank you for that kind introduction um, to, to my resume of my career. I'm very lucky. I feel like I've had a very varied career. I am a health visitor. I spent pretty much my whole career doing health visiting, and I'm very proud to be a health visitor because I've seen firsthand the difference that it makes to families. So the session today is harnessing the power of home visiting, or put very simply, what's the problem? Why does it matter? And how does home visiting provide an important part of the solution? So in my career, I've worked with thousands and thousands of families, and I've learned so much from them. I feel very privileged and thankful to them. Um, I'm also, as a personal um, note, I'm a mother of three children, and my middle son was born free term. He's got cerebral palsy. Uh, so I've also learned firsthand from him and that experience, uh, unexpected things happen in life. Uh, and two very important truths. So the first one is that all children have hopes and aspirations. Um, but sadly, we know from the evidence that some children are much less likely to achieve their dreams and aspirations than others. Disadvantage starts early, the effects are cumulative, uh, they can last a lifetime, they can pass from one generation to the next if they're not addressed. The other truth is that actually all parents, every parent that I've ever worked with, wants the very best for their child. Uh, but we know that being a parent can be challenging, and there are thousands of reasons why life doesn't work out the way that we hoped. As I said, unexpected things happen. You might have a preterm birth, a sick baby, a disabled child. Life can be much harder if you're experiencing a mental health problem yourself, or you have other challenges like domestic abuse or addictions. Um, and this can all impact on child outcomes. But fundamentally, inequalities are not inevitable, and we must never lose sight of that. So if we want to change things, uh, we need to face up to the challenges, but we also need to embrace the opportunities of which there are many. Um, every country will be slightly different, so your challenges will be slightly different. Uh, but fundamentally, there are some key themes that we all share. So on this slide, I've put out the challenges. Um, many of us experience widening inequalities, and groups of children still have a very poor state of child health and well-being. In England, we're very concerned about rising levels of invisible, vulnerable children, and the pandemic has made this worse. Children with unidentified need who aren't getting the support that they need. And we know that the cost of failing to intervene is enormous. But in terms of opportunities, we actually have more evidence than any other generation that the early years lay the foundation for lifelong health and well-being. We know that investment in the earliest years of life is a smart investment. Um, we know enough about what works to know that early intervention can make a huge difference and inequalities are not inevitable. And for health visitors or home visitors, uh, these are highly skilled workforce that's uh, well equipped uh, to make a significant contribution to numerous government priorities uh, for child health and well-being. So what are universal home visiting programs? We've heard a little bit about it already. Uh, the aims are to support healthy pregnancy, improve early childhood development. So all four of these WHO recommendations to ensure readiness for school and to reduce health inequalities in young children. It's a universal prevention program of early intervention, provides public health services to all families with children from pregnancy to the age of five, and the fact that it reaches all families is a huge benefit because actually there's no stigma that everybody has a health visitor. It doesn't work from a medical model. So it's uh, the philosophy is really about health creation. It's strength based. Nobody starts with nothing. Everybody's got strengths. Uh, building on those, seeing the person in the context of where they live and pivoted around these three core practices of home visiting, needs assessment, 
and working with others to find uh, a solution uh, for each individual family. So what kind of a workforce do we need to do this very important work? Uh, this does vary a bit depending on the country, as Aritza has already said. Uh, but most importantly, what we need is a workforce with practitioners with the skills to work in partnership with families and to address these key public health priorities. So we're talking about adult health and child health, physical health and mental health, child development, social needs and safeguarding. So the remit is quite broad. Um, in the UK, this role is done by a qualified health visitor. So they have a registered nurse or midwifery background. They've then gone on and done additional study, which is now actually at master's level, um, and the profession and its standards are regulated nationally by the Nursing and Midwifery Council. The way that the service is delivered uh, varies by country, but generally it looks something a bit like this with similar key elements set out on this slide. So starting from the left hand side, we need a national framework uh, which sets out the blueprint for the service. Uh, we set out an example in our vision for health visiting, which we published in 2019. Um, all families in the model will get a number of universal contacts. So in England, some families will get five. In other parts of the country, they get more. In Scotland, it's 11. And then families who have identified need will then have additional support tailored to their specific need. Um, fundamentally, the needs of the child and the family remain at the centre and the relationship with, that they have with their health visitor is crucial. This is not a, a, a friend. This is a professional relationship built on trust, uh, built up over time. Um, and then the content of the, um, the work that they do is focused around these high impact areas where the evidence says health visitors can make the biggest difference. So things like uh, transition to parenthood, uh, perinatal and infant mental health, supporting child development. I, I won't read them all out, but um, all driven by evidence, uh, evidence that early intervention makes a difference in these areas. So when we consider the mechanism for change, so how are we going to change things, it's really important that we are reminded about how outcomes are made in the complex and messy real world. Uh, and to do this, we need to think about systems, complex systems. The world is complex. People are complex. None one of us are exactly the same. So our solutions uh, will need to take account of this. And the example I put on this slide is childhood obesity but it applies to any of these issues. They're all costing the government a fortune. Um, and just telling people to eat less for obesity and exercise more, we know it doesn't work. It's too simplistic. It's not cause and effect. We need to think about systems. So on the bottom left-hand side of that slide, you'll see what's called the Foresight Obesity Complex Systems Map. And you, I don't expect you to be able to see it, um, but go, you can look at it later. But if there are 108 variables and 300 causal links that cause ob obesity, and we're all affected differently. So in that respect, our solutions need to take account of the child at the center with the family around them, uh, their wider community, their population, to look at what are the drivers for this family at this time and to find a solution that works for this parent and for their child, not just any child. And, and, and this applies for every of these high impact areas on this slide. And as I said, they're all costing a fortune. Uh, outcomes are also made by taking a proportionate universalism approach. So there's a simplistic view that we just focus on the most vulnerable. But actually what the evidence says is that this will not reduce health inequalities sufficiently. There's lots and lots of evidence to support this. A great quote from Sir Michael Marmot on this slide that actually focusing solely on the most disadvantaged won't reduce health inequalities. Uh, what it does is misses the opportunity to re reduce the whole social gradient across the whole population. So on this slide, I've put a graph which is childhood obesity, but you will have exactly the same graph for a whole raft of other public health challenges. So it might be uh, accidents, childhood accidents, or health, uh, speech and language development, broader child development, they're all socially driven. Um, so if we focus only at this end on the most deprived decile of deprivation, what we do is we're missing out on all of these children here who are all affected to a greater or lesser extent. So what we need is a universal service for all families, early identification of need, and then additional targeted support for all of the children uh, who are affected. Um, how we work matters too in the complex and messy real world. Um, and health visiting is much more than just a, an intervention. So not just these purple things, chevrons I put on this slide. We need to think across the whole pathway. 
and many people have described it as a vital infrastructure for the early years. So we need to start up here, someone's talked pathways already, with prevention, so ideally stopping problems happening in the first place. Uh, an example would be fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, 100% preventable, uh, very hard to treat, but definitely worth it because uh, children are significantly impacted if they aren't treated. Um, secondly, early identification of need is absolutely crucial. You can't do early intervention without it. But what the evidence tells us is that there are many barriers to identification of need. Some families will have multiple and coexisting problems. Uh, they don't even know where to start some of the time. Uh, they may feel stigma or shame. They don't want to reach out and ask for help. Maybe they don't know that help is available for them. Um, maybe they don't recognize they have a problem or that their baby is in distress. So what they need, and this is really important, is a practitioner with the skills to get alongside them, uh, to understand the world where they live, to build a trusting relationship where the parent shares the things that really matter, and then with the skills to sift through the detail of their life with them. You're getting a set of outcomes in this life and uh, th th all the variables around you, and to help them to imagine another world uh, where they maybe get a different set of outcomes and, and, and the steps that they need to take to get there. Uh, and that's really important. And the other thing is we know that the families that need help the most are the, often the least likely to reach out for help. Um, and they are the most likely to drop out. <laughs> Highest rate of attrition. Uh, so we need to build a service that expects that. We, we need uh, a safety net around these families, babies or citizens in their own right. And we need services that reach out to them, uh, which is really important. And again, relationships are key if we want to have improved outcomes. Proving impact uh, in a complex world can be challenging, uh, but it's definitely not uh, impossible. And there's growing worldwide evidence that prevention really is better than cure, and early action leads to cumulative savings. It also reduces pressure across other parts of the health and care system, um, um, both now and in long into the future. Uh, and has wider system benefit, uh, really through the early identification of need. And so on this slide, I've just put two examples, but there's lots across the globe of, of um, evaluations of um, what you would call intensive home visiting, uh, universal home visiting. Uh, this, this is the one from England, which is in 2016, which looked at the um, National Health Visiting Programme, which found statistically significant improved outcomes in many relevant areas. And this is a more recent one from Scotland. So they have just increased their offer in Scotland uh, to 11 universal contacts. And what they found was that um, they had reached across all socioeconomic groups. The additional reviews identified concerns for children that hadn't been previously flagged. So these are vulnerable children that would have been invisible if the service hadn't been there. And parents reported positive outcomes. They felt better able to ask for and accept support that was on offer. So as I come to a close, I just want to summarize, if we want to drive change, we need to do it with the evidence um, and focus around these three key priorities. So firstly, quality. We need a national framework with agreed goals and outcome measures. Workforce, we need the right workforce with the right skills in the right number, with the right training, with supervision. Um, and this needs to be calculated at a, a national level with demand-driven workforce modeling. And we also need sustainable funding, um, investment to save. Uh, we need a shift from the way we see spending on babies, young children and families as a cost. And instead, we need to see this as the, one of the smartest, if not the smartest of all investments and investment in our human future. And so I want to leave you with this beautiful picture on my last slide, which I think speaks a thousand words. It looks to the horizon. It looks to the future. Uh, what kind of a future are we hoping to build for our children? It speaks of inclusion and it speaks of hope. Uh, there's a quote from the Duchess of Cambridge, uh, now the Princess of Wales. Uh, she's very interested in this work. She does a lot of work in early years. And she said, is it a brave thing to believe in an outcome in a world even that might not be fully felt for a generation or more? And actually, I call on everybody that's here today. It rests with us. We are the adults in this world, and we are the people that can make this happen. So I'm going to hand back over to you, Lizaritza, and uh, very happy to take questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alison. It was amazing. You gave us a lot of 
food for thought and I think that we are all going to visit uh, webinar uh, web page uh, to look again at your at your presentation and what impressed me the most is the part with this uh, image that we are working in in an isolated space where we focus on where we focus on our idea how the problems could be solved without taking this broader picture into account. So thank you so much for this. And I'm going to ask my colleague Vera Rangelo from UNICEF ECARO. She was watching, is there any questions? So Vera, do we have a question for Alison? Uh, yes, and I would like to encourage the participants to put their questions in the question and answer uh, section. There is already one question. Is there any experience with group care, centering pregnancy and centering parenting based methodology for early childhood development? Um, seeing families in groups rather than one to one, is that what you mean? Um, I think uh, uh, this is, I, if I can invite the Yvette Fleming uh, to, to, um, to act a little bit on her question. No, you can't. <laughs> okay. So try to take both perspectives when you are answering. Okay, so I have, I've just seen the question in the chat box. Uh, centering pregnancy and centering parenting based methodology for early childhood development. I mean, I, I, I don't, I'm not familiar with this title here in the question, but Broadly speaking, um, if we want to improve early childhood development, what the evidence tells us that we need to start probably preconception, actually, that uh, the determinants of health and well-being are laid before pregnancy, throughout pregnancy, and throughout the what we call in England the first 1,001 critical days of life. Um, there are benefits in working with families individually. There are also benefits from working with families in groups. So personally, I've worked with women who have uh, perinatal mental health problems, and we set up a group called Knowing Me, Knowing You. So it was about helping families to understand themselves as women, uh, to understand their baby, because that's about attuning to your baby and your baby's needs, but also um, um, getting a friendship and support network with each other to understand, actually, I'm not the only person that's struggling with this issue. There are other families feeling the same, and that can be a huge source of strength. And yes, that was all very well evaluated, and it was shown to improve outcomes. Um, and what it did was actually it helped the women as, as the group ended. They then had their own support network, and that's the strength of health visiting, is actually what you want to do is equip people, empower people to go and live their life by themselves. They don't want somebody there all of the time, but it's to equip people to have the, the strength and the knowledge uh, to be confident um, to, to go on their own, I guess. That, that's the success. Thank you. Thank you, Alison. And I think this is something that we are all advocating also for to, to introduce more to introduce more prenatal, prenatal home visits. Because until now, the focus was when the baby is born. So it's very, very, really, really, very crucial to start. Really important. I mean, just the, as another before comment. Before the beginning, um, before the beginning. Yes. In, in my work with families, what I found is if you work with them in pregnancy, they generally have this kind of view that the world's going to be wonderful and it's going to be great. And you can talk to them about what are your dreams to be a parent, what kind of a parent do you want to be? I remember working with a young mother um, who had been brought up in care. And, and I said to her, you know, what kind of a parent do you want to be? And she said, you know, I really want to be a great parent. And then after the baby was born, she had a lot of struggles. But it was a real strength point because I could say to her in a very kind way, you know, what's happened? I won't tell you the details, but it, 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 um, it fell apart. And, um, and you know, what's happened and how can we get you back? I remember you told me you wanted to be a great parent and how can we get you back to that uh, and support you to be that? And that's a really powerful place. Yeah. So I think the antenatal content is crucial. Thank you, Alison. We have to move forward because we have so many. Ah, we have so many things to, to cover. 
So now we are going to move to the testimonies from the region after hearing Alison's story. I just want to say that in the ECA region, a significant work was done on, uh, to strengthen home visiting systems. So now we are going to see video where we will hear opinions of service providers and beneficiaries about the importance of home visiting. And after video, we will ask Alexandra Jovic, early childhood specialist from UNICEF of Ekero, to walk us through the past, present, and future of the work on home visiting in the region. So, can we see the video? Home visiting um, is one of the most important partner of uh, general practitioner and family doctors. Why is that? Because uh, home visiting nurses can reach the most remote families and children. Uh, they can uh, help detection of child violence, neglect and abuse and other health concern. The, that is something that we as a general practitioner and family doctors with our everyday workload we, we cannot achieve every time. They also uh, are a very important part of the program for early detection and uh, early intervention in children with disabilities and at the same time are very uh, important for uh, follow-up of development of the child and also education of young parents to increase their knowledge about uh, how to stimulate their child development. Uh, most of the time they can also facilitate uh, families and children to achieve their rights from the social protection, education and other community services. In North Macedonia, several past years, we are trying to integrate home visiting services with general practitioner in other uh, public health services in one multidisciplinary team in order to put child in the center of the care. За нашу породицу найвіча бенефіт патоножна посета і могу кажу, що перед даним обріги о дете тут буде. For our family, it's most important that we are supported by professionals in our home. In that way, the patronage nurse tried to kako bismo odgovorili na nove potrebe deteta. Također, mnogo mi je značilo to što je dolazkom u porodicu ona imala prilike da vidi kako mi funkcionišemo inače i usmeri nas na to da je, bez obzira što sada trebamo da brinemo o bebi, jednako važno i da brinemo o sebi i da brinemo o partnerskom odnosu isticala važnost mreža podrške koja treba da nam je tu kako bismo uspeli da odgovorimo na sve zadatke. Biti patronažna sestra je velika čast jer mi smo profesionalke koji roditelji dočekuju u svom domu u momentu kada se njihov život mijenja. Oni taj trenutak dijele sa nama, mi postajemo prijatelji i savjetnici od kojih se mnogo očekuje. S druge strane, naš posao ima veliku odgovornost jer upoznajući različite porodice imamo mogućnost širene podrške mreže unutar zajednice. Ojačana zajednica podrazumijeva ne samo dug, već i kvalitetan život njenih članova. Zbog svega toga mi, patronažne sestre, moramo biti obučene i moramo imati podršku supervizora, pogotovo u situacijama kada radimo sa porodicama kojima je potrebna dodatna podrška, kao što je slučaj povećane stope siromaštva, nasilje u porodici ili odgajanje i vespitavanje djece sa smetnjama u razvoju. Obučeni, osjetljivi i na porodicu usmjereni profesionalci mogu kroz kućne posjete da doprinesu jačanju roditeljskih kompetencija i otpornosti porodice na izazove sa kojima se u datom momentu susreće. Ukoliko želimo kvalitetnu patronažu, moramo ulagati u kadar u njihovo kontinuirano, stručno osposobljavanje i bolje uslove u kojima će oni moći da podrže porodice na najbolji mogući način. It was interesting to hear what family doctors, home visitors and parents can 
think about the importance of home visiting. And now I'm inviting Alexandra to, as I said, walk us through past, present, and the future of home visiting in the region. Alexandra, please. Thanks a lot, Zorit. I think it will be difficult in eight, eight minutes, but let us at least try to summarize. Whenever I hear home visitors speak, I really recall that I believe that they are superheroes in whatever they do in their daily duties. So let's just uh, go through a few slides to remember what was the journey so far. There are many benefits of home visiting. You've heard about them in Europe and Central Asia region. A number of factors also contributed to the decision to really focus on this platform of the health system. And primarily the fact that we have almost universal coverage with primary health care services, and they are in unique position to support both young children that are in contact and their parents. In most of the countries in the region, there were some home visiting uh, modalities, but unfortunately with the limited scope of services and focusing mainly on the child's physical health. And lastly, we recognize that really there is a lot of space to expand, to strengthen these services, to improve effectiveness and efficiency, and to include the focus on early childhood development. So we've started supporting uh, home visiting more than 10 years ago, our first running um, assessment studies across over 10 countries, and starting promoting the universal progressive model of home visiting that Alison nicely explained under the premise that every family would need some level of support, but there are families that will need more, not only from the health system, but that will need also referral and intensive support and linking with other systems and other services. We've started with the you know, um, building of the consensus in 2012 at the regional conference in Ankara. In 2013, technical advisory group was established and was really key in developing a lot of the different resources that supported so far 17 countries in our region to pursue the, the, the road of introducing and strengthening home visiting in their countries. These resource packages primarily include the regional recommendations, as you know, that are you know, providing guidance and uh, recommendations for the policy framework, standards of home visiting, curricula, monitoring and evaluation frameworks, as well as recommendations on the very pragmatic steps that countries can take. With the help of the TAG advisory group, and as many countries also that also, uh, and experts in the region and globally, 22 modules for the training of home visitors were developed and they have been extensively used across countries, not only to train home visitors, but to train also allied professionals in many countries, medical doctors and teams at the PhD level. And finally, in 2019, we wanted to see, you know, what is the, you know, through uh, formative evaluation, what have we achieved so far and what can we learn to build the further activities in the future. So multi-country evaluation has been implemented across 16 countries and we have a lot of findings and recommendations that are leading us further. So the evaluation found that home visiting universal progressive model implemented in Europe and Central Asia region was indeed a pioneering effort. This whole work started before the global adoption of the nurturing care framework, as you will recall, but it incorporated early childhood development in health, addressing full range of risks and protective factors. It was aligned with all the key regional, national and global policies, and they found the model to be adequate, evidence-based and able to deliver the intended results. At the same time, evaluation revealed or confirmed a lot of the bottlenecks that we have been aware of in this journey. And these bottlenecks include lack of the functioning and effective m and system, still incomplete legislative framework, and lack of sufficient financing. Furthermore, we saw that the staff shortages and the turnover continue to be problem across countries and that we have to find the ways to ensure continued professional uh, education and training. The, uh, regional recommendations, although available, were not uh, so easily accessible for a lot of the participants and supporters of this process. And we saw that the quality of, the, of adaptation of the training package varies across countries. All these bottlenecks have led us in you know, further thinking on 
what is that we can do, again, in a very pragmatic and operational way. And establishment of the health system for early child development platform is one of the outcomes of this process, because we believe that the platform will serve the, the purpose of further advocacy, support further advocacy and capacity building by sharing adequate resources and bringing the communities of practice together. We have also established the Learn ECD digital online platform that is free of charge and accessible to any professional from this region and broader that have all of these training packages now digitalized and available for home visitors to refresh or start the self-paced learning that can be further than uh, you know, uh, expanded uh, through the face-to-face -face training. And finally, we are working on additional pieces, technical pieces to, to help countries operationalize monitoring and evaluation frameworks and indicators that would adequately capture the benefits of the home visiting and the outcomes for children and families to which they contribute. Lastly, the financing, of course, the costing tools are also being developed that would help countries, you know, uh, analyze the situation and then find out uh, on what are the issues that can be improved. The progress achieved so far benefited a lot from exchange between countries, and we hope that health systems for ECT platform will help us to get together, reinforce our community of practice, and facilitate further learning and progress that changes lives of young children and their families. Thanks a lot, Zorica. Over to you. Thank you, Alex. There are challenges, but there is so much we could be proud of and so much that we can use to build in the future. And, uh, you know, good practices need to be supported by good policies. So we always stress how political will is important, if not, if not crucial. And today with us, we have two representatives of the government, from Azerbaijan and Uzbekistan, Dr. Gunel Mamadova and Dr. Rishi Kamilovna Kalifodaeva. A warm welcome to both of you. A warm welcome to both of you and thank you for joining us. Your countries made amazing investment and progress in strengthening home visiting systems. So we want to learn from you today and we hope that your experience will inspire other policymakers and governments and state bodies to put the home visiting in the spotlight. And I would like to start with Dr. Mamadova. Dr. Mamadova, you are experienced doctor. You're coming from the practice. Yes, hello, Zoritza. I welcome all the participants. I thank you for indeed giving us the platform and the way to participate in this project. We are very happy to have you because Спасибо. we have personal reasons. I did a, lot of, a, a lot of work in your country. But what I want to stress is that in your country, you made amazing progress. You trained, I'm just asking my colleague to share the slide with your, your, your achievements, which are really amazing. Yes. You piloted the model of universal progressive home visiting in four districts, and you reached to 10,000, almost 11,000 families with children under age of three, you also reached a huge number of uh, children, almost 20,000 children and uh, almost 2,000, two no. a little bit more than 2,000 pregnant women. women. And you adapted and integrated the modules that Alex was mentioning, developed in cooperation between ISA and UNICEF, you incorporated in the training of home visitors, of uh, pediatricians. And me, at this moment, Ministry of Health and State Agency for, for Mandatory Health Insurance and Tabib developed 
a joint plan for phased rollout of this program. So what we would like to hear from you is uh, what is the motivation of the government and relevant state bodies and institutions to invest in home visiting and also about your plans for scaling up the program? Yes, you rightly mentioned in a rather short period of time, since 2019, we were able to pilot and start rolling out the project. We started piloting in the cities of Denja and Shiraman and in two districts of the country. First of all, we, we trained 23 senior trainers and produced 26 training modules covering 100 hours of training. Indeed, we covered some 11,000 families and surveyed some 20,000 children under the age of three and more than 200, uh, 2,200 pregnant women. The main motto and the main motivation to introduce the, this program in the country was the result that we obtained after piloting it in four locations. Because of piloting, we saw greater satisfaction by the general public with the healthcare services. We also saw the spike in the number of vaccinated children, so it works to better vaccination. Many future mothers and young parents adopted breastfeeding because we communicated the, the benefits of breastfeeding through the information and awareness raising efforts. Also, as part of this practice, we noticed that it allows for early identification of diseases, illnesses, and disabilities. Also, disability inducing conditions so we had those families timely applying for assistance and for treatment to healthcare facilities which means that which means that in that case there's elevated burden on the state budget which is another key decisive factor for making the decision by the Ministry of uh, Healthcare and the State Agency for Mandatory Health Insurance and by Dabib to have a phased rollout of this project, of this patronage home visits on a nationwide scale. Indeed, the decision was made by the end of 2023 20, uh, to cover the rest of the country. And to that end, we have prepared and produced in Azerbaijani language a web portal on early childhood development, which now hosts 10 training modules. All nurses have access to those training modules. They can get certified. And also parents are receiving all the necessary information. And also we specifically inform parents about the availability of that information portal during the home visits. Also, by means of promoting the project, we and healthcare practitioners were able to get to know their families better and the living conditions better. You know that this project also involved social workers. So the early identified social issues were addressed by social workers which contributed to better handling of those factors that could have become a risk for further development. Because we all know that well-being of parents and the attitude of, parent, of parents to parenting is a prerequisite for adequate development of their children. Zorica, thank you. 
Thank you, thank you. It was so interesting and inspiring. And when you when you think about this little seed that you plant and the things that start to grow, uh, and thank you for yeah. stressing for stressing the importance. I do sorry for budging in. I also wanted to mention that these modules are in, were introduced into the curricula of our medical colleges. So the new in training demographic of professionals will already be aware of this approach. And once graduated, they will be already employing this new approach. Yeah, it's changing the way how we approach training of the training of the of the home visitors, but not only home visitors, but also pediatricians. I was doing trainings in Azerbaijan, and I'm very proud of that. So, Vera, do we have a question for Dr. Dr. Mamadova? Uh, let me check. Um, While you're checking, I, I just want to finish uh, the sentence. Yeah. May I just finish the sentence I was starting? I, I think that it's so powerful what you said that you ask people what they think and what they need. So on one hand, you had data and statistics. On the other, you had the opinion of the beneficiaries and service providers. So Vera, sorry, what is the да, question? Yes, we did monitoring in all three, across all, all four pilot sites, and Ministry of Health was involved, and the National State Agency for Mandatory Health Insurance. And indeed, the monitoring results informed the decision to indeed roll out this on a nationwide you. scale. Vera, sorry, again, back to you. What the question is that we have? Um, yes, uh, there is one question in the uh, in the chat. Uh, in the chat, uh, you uh, you also introduced uh, pediatricians to the new model and new way of working. Uh, and according to you, in your opinion, why it is important also to involve pediatricians and may and introduce them to the to the new model and work as you know they work hand in hand and whenever there is an issue with the family the the pediatrician the district pediatrician uh, needs to be aware of the work that is being done by the nurses. So to be aware and to understand and have sensitivity to what the nurses are doing, they all have to undergo the same training. And also the nurses also have to interface with local social services. And the social services without being aware of the new model would also be unaware how and what the nurse is doing. And the pediatricians without this knowledge would, wouldn't not be able to produce the care plan. Of course, nurses do the bulk of work, but ultimately it's the pediatrician who's the decision, decision maker if there is some additional support that needs to be provided. Thank you so much for joining us. And we will, share, we will share information about your work on the webinar website, uh, webinar web page, and we hope that others, if they are interested, they can reach to you. And now I move to Uzbekistan. Welcome, welcome, doctor. I hope I'm telling your name in the right way. Riksi Kamilovna Sarifodayeva. You are coming from the yeah. Ministry of Health. You're coming from the Ministry of Health. For, uh, healthcare of the Dobre. Dobre. Yes, good afternoon, distinguished colleagues. I'm very happy to be a part of this webinar. Indeed, it's. I'm glad to hear the interventions from all our colleagues about their success in their respective countries. And now I want to take this time to tell about the introducing of universal progressive home visiting in Uzbekistan. 
as you know, uh, that uh, there's ongoing reform underway in healthcare and in other sectors of life in Uzbekistan. Before introducing the universal progressive model and adapting it to our countries, we first of all had to adopt the governmental decision on introducing in Uzbekistan the universal progressive model. And on the basis of this governmental resolution, a task force was created to adapt uh, this program that included nurses and pediatricians to adapt uh, the program to our reality. And this program was developed and approved by the Ministry of Health. And on the basis of that program, we have developed uh, the training for the visiting sisters. And we started making trainers from among the nurses, including those coming from the pre-graded and post-graded training system. And we have trained more than 50,000 visiting nurses using the cascade method on introducing the universal progressive home visiting. Also, we produced the training curricula for pre-graded and post-graded studies. And the cascade training method meant that the training goes forward to train people in the field. In Azerbaijan, we heard they piloted regions, uh, piloted the introduction in certain regions. We did not start with the pilot, we started nationwide rollout, start providing training to all visiting nurses from all over the country, including teachers of medical colleges and medical higher education facilities. Like I mentioned, both in pre-graded and post-graded studies. We started training trainers and trainers and now training the local visiting nurses. We also developed, we also reviewed the, the regulatory framework on the introduction of UPM and on how the work of the visiting sisters is organized, including the terms of references, including uh, the expected scope of competences of the nurses who work in, in the primary health care. Of course, we had certain challenges when we were reviewing uh, the terms of references and competences, because we uh, it meant that terms of references for the general practitioners and uh, the pediatricians need to be reviewed. Now we have reviewed all that, we've done all that, and the functional duties and expected skills and competences of nurses in primary health care and of general practitioners and, and, their, and pediatricians of primary health care. Then in a par on a parallel track, we also developed the mentoring program. So basically, uh, the nurses are providing mentoring assistance to families, and that involved working as a team, engaging with social workers. I mean, it's always, it's always difficult because uh, we all know of the shortages of uh, workforce, specifically of psychologists. And an important element was mentoring not only for mothers, but also for fathers, because we employed the, the full family scale approach. And that kind of outreach enabled early identification of uh, risks or problems in children. It also enabled identifying progressive and progressing issues in the families that might not be of medical issues, but some things that are worth reporting, reporting to the therapists and the pediatricians or social workers. So we can say that as of today, of course, we're still facing challenges. It's about training and teamwork, and we're still working to enhance the system. One of the difficulties is that 
introduction of universal progressive home visiting model puts a stress on the current document processing and information management systems because uh, that means digitalization of certain processes because uh, nurses need to be able to manage all the reports and do tracking and follow up online and that's challenging at this point also the same is expected of other members of the team and we see that uh, some people are struggling not only in terms of training but in terms of in indeed teamwork and uh, constant interfacing along several professions oh, and we not did not only train the pediatricians or general practitioners but we also trained the the medical educational facilities teachers we have 14 post credit medical facilities all over the country and in the curricula we introduced this model this training module on universal progressive home visiting so basically whenever a nurse is enrolled into the postgraduate study she is immediately ex exposed to that training module uh, the question that is coming from the audience is how did you what was the motivation to do this to invest so much in building this upm system if you can give us a short answer what motivated the government and the ministry of health in uzbekistan this is what people are asking because it's such a big thing yes, thank you we all know and our government is aware about the importance of primary health care not about treatment but about prevention so if the visiting nurse is able to identify the possible problem possible issue in a child in a mother or in a pregnant woman or in a family that would save everybody a lot of resources it's better to prevent rather than to cure and that is why our government is all about prevention because prevention is the best cure because uh, it comes without complications it comes at an earlier stage and that's the investment in prevention so whenever we had conferences or events with participation of the ministry of health the governmental decision makers would always say that it's better to prevent than to treat and to, to do that we need to promote healthy lifestyle and and prevent as many things as that, that are preventable thank you so much thank you so much for to you and to dr maman maman thank you for very inspiring presentation and we will come back to you because under the health for early child development in this initiative we want to inspire and motivate and support policy makers to invest more in home visiting services so both your examples are very precious so we answered the question from the audience and let's move from and now let us move from policy to practice all of you until now we're talking a lot about how we need to support the workforce and we also heard the adranka Milanić from Montenegro talking if you want to have quality you have to build the quality workforce so let's talk with Kristina Nedeljkovic from Serbia about the new practice that Serbia introduced in uh, uh, introduced in, uh, in home visiting practice when the COVID pandemic started and this is video video counseling and video meetings and Christina, everything happened under the regional program mitigating the impact of COVID-19 on 90s, COVID-19 on the lives of children and families in Western Balkans and Turkey. 
and LEGO and UNICEF and USAID were involved. And Christina was one of the pioneers and they made amazing results, trained 150 patronage nurses, reached to more than 30,000 families. And what is very interesting, the model survived. So Christina, and I apologize to participants, we are going to go a little bit over the time, but we also started a little bit late, but I kindly ask you to stay, at least to see the video, how this counseling looks like. So from the practice, directly from the practice, Christina. I do my best to be short. Uh, good to see you all. My name is Christina Nedeljkovic and I am patronage nurse from Novi Sad. Um, and head of the uh, home visiting service in public health center Novi Sad, the biggest service uh, of this kind in Serbia. Like Zorica said, uh, the COVID-19 has been a huge challenge for health system in Serbia. Pandemic uh, made clear that- the Sorry, Christina, you, you have to say when you need the next slide, please. Okay, I will say it. This is the first slide. Uh, next slide, yeah, <laughs> I see. Sorry, I tried to be fast. So. Okay, the service that we provide to the families, um, we realize that is not flexible, not available uh, for all the families, and that we do not have enough resources to be with the families in the way that was safe for all of us. So we had to do uh, to change approach and content of the home visits to meet families needs and concerns. Uh, please next slide. Um, so we have um, introduced video counseling, although it was never meant to replace home visits, uh, and even during the lockdown and isolation, we made home visits to, to uh, families with uh, newborn babies. Uh, video counseling was used in counseling families who are um, expecting babies during pregnancy and with families with infant and toddlers. Uh, during lockdown, video counseling replaced home visits in these families, but during pandemic and still, uh, has been used in the way to provide additional support or follow up meetings with these families. So we can say that video meetings with families are type of providing supports to families when home visits uh, are not uh, possible, sufficient or cost effective. Thanks to the video counseling, as Zorica said, 100, 148 patronage nurses reached and supported more than 35,000 families. Plus we had home visits with direct contact in families home. Um, video counseling contributed to the quality of the service in promoting nurturing and stimulating environment for every child. Added value of video counseling was flexibility. We had opportunity to be more flexible with reaching both parents, especially fathers, or we had opportunity to involve other people who are um, in support network for that family. In time, they are available. We had better access to families because we didn't have to travel to them. And we had opportunity to care and support for children and families regardless of place uh, of living. We could include uh, the family members who live in some other country or city. Uh, that um, we came to the conclusion that video counseling gave us opportunity to use diverse tools in working with families and observing how are they process and implement new informations or um, development their uh, parent skills. Um, next slide, please. Okay, we use different kinds of techniques, diff different techniques during video counseling, but we realized that words are our strongest tool. When we don't have opportunity to be with the family, then we lose opportunity to feel atmosphere in home, to feel family stress or energy. Uh, we lose opportunity to demonstrate, to hug them, to hold their hands. And then we have to use a lot of open questions and give the family an opportunity to describe what they feel or experience or how they, uh, their child behaves. And we have to be very aware of face expressions, to pay special attention on the tone of our voice, uh, the pace of speech, so we can develop empathic relationship with them. We have to think about the words we use in order to send clear message to parents. Like in regular regular visit, we uh, uh, used providing effective guidance and giving them advices they need. But one new technique that we used was modeling parental behavior. Before, we had more direct approach. 
Sometimes it was really easier to do something instead of parents to show them how to take care of the child or behave in different routines. But during video meetings, we had to ask them to describe what are they doing, how they are interacting with the child, how the child behaves, and to guide them how to do things on their own. And this was harder. We shared written materials. We did that um, and before uh, the video counseling. One new technique that we um, uh, used was sharing um, and analyzing video materials. We had to think of the way how to observe interaction between parents and the child. And um, so we shared video materials in both ways. Uh, we sent videos to the family or family filmed feeding, reading, or talking with the child and send it to us. Uh, so in both of these situations, we analyzed the video together with the family, and this was really important part of video counseling. And uh, please, Zorica, now we're going to play the movie, and uh, you're going to see how it may look in practice. The video uh, is short um, a part of my work with the family of five months old baby. The father was almost never present at home and uh, usually spends very little time with the family because he has to work. However, both parents are very motivated to respond um, and to participate in child's care. And you're going to see me talking to mother about responsive feeding while we're analyzing um, um, family's video of father-child interaction during lunch. At the same time, I have opportunity to uh, support responsive feeding techniques, to describe baby's cues, uh, to support and stress father's engagements and give positive feedback on their parenting alliance and mutual support and trust in developing child care competencies. So please, Orica, uh, play the movie. A sada ću samo kratko da nam pustimo ovaj video filmić, da ga zajedno, samo ovaj kratki, kratki ovaj segment da, da, da pustim da pogledamo zajedno. Vidite? Vidim. E, super. Sad vidite njega kako je već... E, ovo je ono da se priča. Da celim tijelom bukvalno daje znake. I sad hoću da stignemo do onog jednog momenta. Bravo! Znači, ovo je sad sjajno. Bravo! Tako dobro ima jednu komunikaciju sa njima ranjenja. I tako dobro tu interakciju u kojoj se nalazi. I sad ovo je super podsticajno za njega. Još ima sad imitaciju. Da, da. Sjajno. I sad dolazi ovaj jedan moment. Ajde, papi, penje. Pa čekaj, pa što si ne strpi? Jeste, s celim telom pokazuje kako je ne strpi. Da, da, baš to. Danas mu zapravo nije ni trebala nikakva motivacija. To je tako trajalo te četiri kašičice, bukvalno u, eto, možda minut smo već pojeli. Vidite kako suprug je rekao, dosta je sad dosta snimanja, jel? Vidje mama što je rao. Vidje mama. Vidje mama. Znamiš? E, sad smo čuli, smo dodali glas. Znači, je važno da vi sad, ovo je moment da vidite, nekada je jako dobro pogledati snimak toga. Jes. Stvarno jako dobro razgovara sa njim tokom hranjenja i veselo lice, široko onako i baš ga drži u toj interakciji. To je skroz zabavno ispustvo, vidi se po njemu da mu prija. Ali on je gladan. Vidite moment kada se upravo više neće da se snima i okreće se prema vama i pokušava da mu prebaci fokus na nešto drugo. Je li uspeo? Kako vam se čini? Nije. Ne, nikako. A što misliti zašto? Pa on bi hteo još. Hteo još. Thank you, Kristina. I adore to watch at your face and the mother's face. And you have two more slides that we want to that you want to share with us and one of the slide is going to answer to the question for the audience. Did family like it? So Okay. Um, uh, I think that video is always much richer than the words. So this is a really good example of how does it look in practice. Um, what did we learn uh, during the video counseling? Uh, communication with the family, we learned how important it is to, to and what are the gains of open-ended questions and how to give family more chance to speak about their experience, what um, the supporting communication is and how 
to praise and nurture when there is no physical contact and when you have only facial expressions, voice or words. You saw that in this movie. Um, we learned how to join the family, how to develop empathic and warm relationship and trust with both parents. Uh, we lear learned how to monitor our goals, uh, how to do self-reflection and how to analyze efficiency of our activities with the family. This is a very important part. The biggest challenge definitely was how to support development of parenting skills and how to model parents' behavior because this was something new. And finally, we have learned how to share the learned with each other. This is important part. To unite in the learning community and how to reflect on our relationships or activities with family. How to present our work to each other, how to learn from other people's, people's experience and how to think about challenges and feelings um, we have uh, regarding our work with the family. And uh, next slide, and this is the last slide, I think. Uh, today, uh, home visitors and families love video meetings. They were very, very useful uh, both to the families and home visitors during COVID-19 and still are. Uh, they have helped to reach the families when the actual visit was impossible, to maintain the contact with them and with some to intensify it. Now, today we have trainers, we have training packages and the manual for video uh, meetings and other home visitors are now learning how to apply this um, uh, uh, this kind of work. We are strongly advocating direct visits, definitely, but we use video meetings when it's necessary to additionally support the family and when we need to analyze parenting training video or watch video that family made. And we also um, uh, use especially video counseling when it comes to fathers who often because of working hours cannot attend the visit. Uh, now we are learning to balance and find the best place for video meetings to be useful for all of us. And um, I definitely have to share with you that what I have learned uh, the most during this compulsory introduction of innovations was becoming aware of how important is it to learn and question my practice with other colleagues. These changes seem like a paradigm shift and they're leading to the insights that uh, as there is no uh, health, security and learning for the babies without good relationship with, with parents, um, uh, there is no success, uh, success um, uh, at my work without sensitivity to the family's needs and readiness to work uh, with them on quality relationship because uh, I need to show them how to behave with their family. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Very inspiring. And I see progress in this, uh, the way you presented that this practice of self-reflection is very alive. Thank you. And in a way, you answered to the question from the audience, did parents like it? They loved it, it seems. So thank you so much. Thank you to everybody, to translators, to participants, to speakers, panelists. I think it was very inspiring. I think we shared so much information so in the future we could come back to many of things. But now I would like to give floor to Eva to close the webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dorota. And um, I think we're as, as you rightfully said, it was a set of very inspiring presentations and so much content has been shared uh, both for policymakers, uh, professionals, practitioners, and even all the way down to those of us who are parents and living this day in and day out. Um, so big thanks to everyone. Um, it's, it's my honor to close this webinar, but also to remind you that this is uh, really a teaser. Um, you know, really at the beginning of the exchange of the community of learning and opportunities for further exchange that this initiative is meant to bring um, to the region. And we hope that all of you will join us for the official launch of the initiative because this was a pre-launch, really just the, the appetizer of, of the menu, so to say. Um, and we hope that the launch will take place in November. Uh, so really stay tuned and, and please join us for that because we hope it will be very exciting as well. Um, I invite you to please continue to follow this initiative for more webinars, for exchanges, and a very exciting brand new website that's coming out later this fall. Um, and in order to subscribe uh, for the initiative, um, I hope you see a very um, helpful QR code 
that's showing up on your screen right now. And um, you know, all of us are now very digitally um, and technologically advanced. So you can just scan the, the code and um, you would immediately be able to join the mailing list and receive additional information for upcoming events, for the launch um, and the website as well. Um, or you can follow the link, which I think our colleagues from ESA just put in the chat box um, and also sign up in this way for future events and opportunities. Of course, by participating in this webinar, we already know that we can count on you for further exchange and support on this very important topic. Um, and we really look forward to everything that's to come this fall and in 2023 um, on all the topics that we um, outlined in the beginning, certainly continue the dialogue on home visiting, but also introduce um, the other areas um, where we would like to, to strengthen the dialogue and exchange of practice, including facility-based counseling, developmental monitoring and early childhood intervention services. So thank you once again. Um, it's really impressive that so many of us are here today to, to begin uh, this dialogue and we look forward to everything that's to come. Have a wonderful Friday to, to everyone, <laughs> wherever you are. Wonderful end of the week. Bye to everybody and thank you so much.